Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Outpost Review. I was actually able to stop by the clerk's office and apply for a lost title with the original owner, uh, sign it. They actually printed a new title. I signed it, and then we got tags all in about five minutes. And of course, the cost of the, the taxes that I paid and the price of the tag and the transfer of the title. But it wasn't bad at all. You know, they don't even have to send them off anymore. They can actually print them there. It's just something new that I guess that they started. So that was really nice that you don't have to send, apply for a lost title and wait on it to come back in the mail. But the trailer actually um, had lights. I knocked some of them off, you know, backing into trees and stuff, doing some logging and everything that I've been using the trailer for. So. I actually had to replace those, but they're working now. And now that I've got the ti uh, the well, yeah, the title and the tag, we are legal to be able to cross the state line. So that's really nice to um, have that ability. You know, I was going to try to chance it, but then I called him and I said, "Hey, I said, uh, would you meet me down there and let's apply for a lost title? Because I know that I have it. The only thing is, I don't know where it's packed up. So." He met me, uh, he was happy to do that, and we transferred it and changed everything, and now we're good to go. So I'll be heading up there. My son is actually flying in to Asheville, um, and I'm going to pick him up there at the airport. We're going to get the trailer loaded. I'm actually going to take the cameras with me. We're going to get the trailer loaded, and then we will head back the following day and uh, uh, with a load of rock to go underneath the bottom of the cabin and they've been laying inside taking a nap and they're kind of uh, a little bit rambunctious now so I hear somebody sawing it's kind of late to be doing that but um, maybe they're trying to dig their way out who knows anyway um, yeah so we'll be seeing you I guess in Asheville on one of the uh, next episodes of Smoky Mountain Outpost. Well, I have picked, I don't know how many, probably five buckets full of tomatoes. Uh, Jennifer has canned some salsa for me. Um, I have gave some of the tomatoes away. We've ate a lot of tomatoes here. Um, and I picked another bucket uh, yesterday. And I've still got some hanging there. The beans, I can't remember um probably picked three buckets of those you've seen her can some of them i gave some of those away and we have ate some of those so they were good and the corn is still it's coming on cucumbers i've ate some gave some away uh, the onions i've got those up drying so hopefully next year i can get some more raised beds i'm gonna try that huda culture uh, i'll try a couple of mounds of that and see how that's going to work so what I'm going to do uh, in the fall when a lot of the poison actually leaves. I'll go around gathering up a lot of the dead stuff um, and I'll start making preparations to build my mounds you know with the dead stuff underneath and then fill uh, dirt on top of that but um, anyway it has been a really good growing season and I'm hoping that next year I think what I'm going to do next year is I'm going to mix in some potting soil in with this dirt and see if it will grow even better so over the winter time I'll try to collect some of that so that I'll have it for springtime anyway Smokey's wanting me to throw some sticks for him uh, like I said he's a little rambunctious because he took a nap and he's ready to go That's what we do all day long. We did that up at my sister's house earlier. Um, he's actually got a toy that she gave him and Dolly. And his newest game is to take a ball or to take something and basically lower it over the top of her. Um, she know, He knows that she can't pull it out of his mouth and he's taller than she is. 
but that's what he wants to do. He wants to, to lord over the top of it. Let me see if I can pull him out here where you can kind of watch him. And what he's going to do is he'll just kind of walk around with it in his mouth and he'll, te he'll tease her with it. But I think he's wanting me to throw it again because he just woke up. So I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Well, anyway, um, I don't know if you can see this tote, and I can't remember if I mentioned, I had a good friend that actually brought that up here. He called me up one day and he said, hey, he said, I've got something for you. Um, are you there? And I said, yeah, I'm here. So uh, he brought that to me and he's actually going to get me another one. And I have seen, uh, and I took a picture of it, if I can get two more of them, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stack one on top of the other. I'm going to cut the bottom out of one, the top out of the other one, and then I will cut in a door on one side, and I'll rig up a platform up on top where I can put a uh, black one uh, that will hold water and then will draw heat, you know, because anything that's black draws heat. Smokey knows that very well in the summertime, and made an outdoor shower and I thought you know that would be so cool to be able to put uh, swimming trunks on and just step in there and turn the shower on and it'd be gravity fed and just basically cool off or if I was really nasty at the end of the day instead of going to the house I could shower outside so he's wanting me to throw it again I gotta be careful with that arm because I've got a torn rotator and um, sometimes it bothers me sleeping at night so I gotta be very careful. I can do things sideways but this motion right here um, I can't do too well. So anyway, but yeah, that's a new idea that I've got so I may be working on that. If, like I said, if I can get a hold of two more of them, I might try to work on that next year. Another thing that I'm going to be doing coming up soon is there's a yellow pine that's actually behind the camera there that I'm going to be cutting down and I've got another one picked out uh, that I will cut in preparation for the material for the front porch of the cabin because I'm going to be still doing uh, several projects at once um, working on finishing the cabin on the inside, the walls um, and the ceiling. I've still got to hang more sheetrock but I've still got plenty of time before winter to do that and uh, I wanted to get started on that front porch so that I could kind of get it finished because it would be really nice to have that um, where I could come out and sit and that was the re one of the reasons that I'm going to go ahead and go and pick up the rock and have that where I can at least do the front so that the porch can be put on but I'm excited about doing that because it'll be really nice. And I'm actually going to put a handrail on there like this. So y'all be sure and stay tuned for that because I think that's going to be a fun little build. It's not going to take too long to put those floor joists in there and put the sheathing down and put the handrail on there. I'm excited about doing that. So what I thought I would do is take a little bit of time here and answer some questions again. So let's get the outpost review pulled up here and see if I can... Uh, answer some of the things that you all want to know. A lot of people were commenting on the bed. They said that it was just a beautiful bed and I think it turned out really good. That was my first time at making any kind of furniture. I wanted it to be simple. Um, I've still got some um, I guess railing to go in between the head posts. I did go ahead and put it back together so that I can get up off the floor because I rest a lot easier when I'm not laying down there on that air mattress. Uh, but I'll have to take it apart one more time to put those uh, slats, or not slats, but the 
the um, the post between the two head beam or the two head post and the foot post. Uh, but then after that, I think what I'm going to do is run one screw in each one of the slats so that they stay in place, and um, you know it will help to keep the bed uh, in the square position in case you know you grabbed a hold of one leg and pulled it wouldn't do one of these numbers. Um, but it's solid any other any other direction it's solid it's not going anywhere. Um, I had asked about the bees. I still have to go in there at night and I'm going to have to do something with them but they said used oil works well with one-third kerosene. Um, I don't have any kerosene I do have the oil um, I guess I could mix some gasoline with it. Um, I have used gasoline before somebody said that dish soap and water would work. Um, I want to be sure and kill them because I don't want them coming back and I don't want to irritate them to where you know now before I found it I would walk in and out um, and I can still walk in and out, but now I'm really leery because there's a fairly substantial hole, so I know it's probably a good-sized nest in there. And there's actually two, um, so I, I don't want to. I want to kill them. I don't want to disturb them at all. Somebody said that when you pick out a TV for the cabin, make sure it's a smart TV so you can watch YouTube when you get internet and Wi-Fi. I can actually do that with a Fire Stick that I have. Um, that I bought um, but you know without internet again uh, that's my big hold up right there is and I'm waiting on Starlink uh, we did sign up for that so hopefully uh, they said it would be in the fall when it came uh, so hopefully you know that will come pretty soon where I can actually get Starlink and uh, be able to stream and watch YouTube like I now I do do that on my phone in the morning sometimes I'll make coffee or hot tea and sit up there in the kitchen and and watch uh, YouTube I don't watch as much as I used to but, you know because it runs the battery down on the telephone but um, anyway but yeah I'm excited about that somebody also want to know if I was going to drill a well and if so when um, I've talked about the rain catchment system. If I do that, I'm not going to need a well. Um, around this area, we have iron and sulfur in the water, so I would have to not only drill the well, but I would have to get a softening system to be able to treat the water. And, you know, those two things together, I don't, I'm not really sure what the prices are. The last cabin that I built was back in 1996, and... I think I paid $2,500 for the well and a, roughly about the same for a softening system. So I can imagine that's probably either double or three times that today. So I don't want to, you know, uh, spend that kind of money. I think the rain catchment system, the barrels that I plan on getting, you know, that's going to be a couple of thousand, but that's a whole lot cheaper than, you know, having to drill a well and get the other. So. And you know the rainwater, um, it's free, and I won't have to worry about a lightning strike. You know, popping the pump down in the hole and having to pull that out and put a new pump on the end of it, or anything like that. So I think I'm going to stick with my original idea and work on the rain catchment system. Somebody else was talking about. Uh, they said that I know that this wouldn't be a project you would want to take on now. With temperatures approaching three digits but a wood-fired hot tub would be great on your upcoming porch on those cold February days well let me just say this I don't even go swimming unless the water is nice and warm and then I don't think that I would dare get out of the tub because I don't like to be wet and cold and because I don't know there's just there's just something about it um, so you know I've had a hot tub before and I don't like the idea of having to put the chemicals in there and clean it out all the time I think that the, the bathtub would be just fine for me I'll just leave it at that and if I put a hot tub actually on the porch then I'm gonna have to build a heavy-duty deck and I'm going to have to support that underneath where that would set because of the weight of the water and all because water weighs 
Uh, it's about nine pounds, I think, per gallon. So, um, yeah, I think that we'll just leave the porch as is, and I'll use the bathtub. I've actually got my eye on a clawfoot high back bathtub to go in there. So, um, I think that that's what I'm going to do. And I appreciate that comment, and I have had hot tub before, but I don't think that I'm going to put one here at the cabin. You know, somebody wrote down here that Walmart has heavy camo material like denim weight, maybe a little heavier in different patterns and colors. So I may check that out. But I just wanted to mention that I heard something. My brother-in-law was saying that, um, I don't know where he heard it, but they've got the idea that they may go, and he said that they were experimenting with one, that they may go totally self-serve. Let me just say this. If they do that, I don't think that I would shop there anymore. Because if I'm going in there to pay them, um, and what he told me, he was funny. He said that he had went in there and he got a couple of carts full of stuff. And he was heading up there and he said there was only three checkouts open and that was the self-serve. And that uh, the lady was motioning like this for him to come on. And he says, what? He said, and she said, this is all that's open. And he said, uh, am I on the payroll? And she kind of looked at him. She says, well, they're accepting applications. He goes, no. He says, uh, if I start ringing it up, then I'm automatically on the payroll. And anyway, so my thought is this. Uh, all of that self-checkout is fine and good. Um, you know, I know why they did it. So that people could get in and out quicker, possibly. But I think of it like this. If they do that, that's taking away somebody's job. And I don't want to do that. You know, we all need a job to be able to support ourselves. And I think it's just, um, you know, you get off of work and you, and you, you go down there and you're tired anyway. Um, or you've got plans that day, but you still have to go and you have to resupply yourself. And you go in there and you spend time trying to find something where they constantly move everything around. And so then you have to go up there, you have to check yourself out and bag it yourself and leave. That's just all part of them making more money and doing away with people's jobs when that's not necessary because they're making enough money as it is. And I just believe that I, I personally won't do that. I won't even use the kiosk at the fast food uh, places. Uh, of course, I haven't visited one of those in a long time. But when I was going to school, I would stop by a lot of time to get a salad or something like that. And they would ask me, can you please use the kiosk? And I told them, I said, no, if I do that, then that's taking away your job. And um, I actually went back to the same place a couple weeks later and they asked me the same thing. And, and it was a different person and I told them that very same statement. Um, but I didn't go back because they're trying to make everything where it's all self-serve. And the same amount of money, it still exchanges hands, but they can do away with uh, the people that are there. And, you know, so they've done away with a job. And it's, it's all in the, the, I think, the attitude of them making more money, which I don't agree with because they're making enough money as it is. So that's just something that I had heard. I don't know whether that's going to be true or not, but... Um, you know, I would rather pay more if I had to go somewhere else and so that somebody else has a job and they will be able to, um, you know, make a living for their family too. And uh, the company is still going to make money. So um, I don't think that I'm too totally out of line. You know, my son, he's trying something new. He found a community post on YouTube and a lot of you guys have answered. We appreciate all the comments that you guys give. And um, so we've seen a lot of information come back from you on, I think it was five different questions that he answered. So I just wanted to take time and say thank you so much for doing that. Um, because as I'm looking through comments here trying to find the questions, I'm running across a whole lot of these comments that were made by you all. So Jennifer, I think, is going to be coming up one more time. Uh, before she's got to go to school um, because school is actually starting next week and uh, 
I hate that because she didn't get to come up as much this summer as she did last summer, but she tried to come, you know, as often as she could. And, you know, the teachers have got all of this down to a science now where they've got so many days off. You know, I can remember uh, not starting school until after Labor Day, um, around September, what, 6th, 7th, we, we started school and we still got out May 23rd. And, we got out, um, what was it, um, Christmas and New Year's, a couple of weeks in there. But we didn't have any issues with going to school and getting out and having three months, you know. We all got out and got a job and basically had a, a great time. But now the kids, you know, they barely get out by the 1st of June. And then they're going back the 1st of August. They don't hardly have any kind of summer at all. So I don't know what all that's about other than... Uh, somebody getting a lot of free time off, but um, anyway, yeah, I, I kind of hate that, but she, you know, she did what she could, and I certainly do appreciate that, and Patrick, uh, number two, uh, he did the same thing, so you all will see them uh, in an upcoming video up here, uh, helping out one more time before they got to go to school, and then they'll basically be reserved till, uh, you know, for weekends when they have time to come up here, but... Um, and thank goodness, you know, fall is on the way, so a lot of these hotter temperatures will dissipate and it'll be a little bit cooler outside to get a lot done. Of course, the hours won't be as long, but I think you move a lot faster because, um, you know, I'll tell you what, working out here in 90 degree weather with 90% humidity or greater, um, you know, it, it can really beat you down. And so I've done a lot of hydrating during the summer, and I don't think that I've worked as hard this summer as I did last summer. I've taken more time off, um, and, you know, I still I get up in the early and try to do something and then take time off during the middle of the day and then come back out later in the evening to do something. And I'm actually shooting this video later in the evening. So, um, yeah, and that's all due in part to those high temperatures. But... Uh, Anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and shut this video down here. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and uh, supporting us on this channel. I hope that, you know, we're answering questions that you want to know uh, to your satisfaction. And uh, don't forget, we're going to be giving away two chainsaws really soon because we're getting close to that 40,000 mark. And we're excited about doing that. Um, you will also see in an upcoming video of me using one of the chainsaws that we're going to, uh, the type that we're going to be giving away. So again, guys, thank you so much for sharing uh, our content with your family, friends, and neighbors. You don't know how much it means to us. We really do appreciate that because if it wasn't for you guys, you know, either one of these channels wouldn't exist. So thank you so much for your support. That's the reason we do our giveaways. Uh, each month for you all and be sure if you're new to this channel go check out Smoky Mountain Outpost That's where we do all the work and go also and check out the website and you can find Information there the three little bars that are at the top click on that There will be a menu that drops down and all the information on our giveaways is there uh, How you enter and and all that so anyway, that's why we do it because of you guys who support us. Anyway, we hope that you guys have a great afternoon. Take care, and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.